Never ever have enough time to play at all. You know everybody wants to. Welcome back to a, another episode of Otter Creek and Rio Grande. So I finally got my industrial tank set in. Uh, this is gonna go hopefully just to the right of my farmer's co-op. I'm gonna go ahead and, and put these together uh, and not paint them up just right off the bat and kind of see, cause I don't, I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna use everything. I'm just gonna have to see what fits and what looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them all together and then see how it fits on the layout. So stand by. I've got a few of the tanks put together and as I suspected, uh, there's certainly not enough room for everything that came in that uh, tank kit. Uh, I basically just built up all the smaller ones once I kind of got a feel for, for what it was going to look like. <clears throat> and so I think this is, this is going to work. Uh, similar to what I did over here, I'm going to try and make a wedge-shaped area just in front of the blue building here, DeWitt's, and give an impression that the road on the back side of the farmer's co-op continues on back behind. Uh, I think I'm going to end up with a tree here, kind of on just on the back side of this tank battery. And then one, maybe two, if I can get it in right here, uh, so you can see through to some lower vegetation uh, on the back side of where the backdrop is. I'm also thinking about maybe putting a tank here at uh, the coal shed. That might work. I haven't decided whether I want to go through with painting it up or not. But that's what I'm looking at at the moment. I'm going to go ahead and prime and paint these and, and get them to where they're looking decent for the layout. I've roughed in a couple of three trees here. Uh, you can see I've also sculpted away some of the foam here because it was uh, a little higher than this side over here. Uh, I've also dished out a little bit of this area. And the idea is, is that from the viewing aisle, if this looks like it's going downhill it just the idea is it gives a hint of a road that might continue on uh, i did the same thing over here and you know obviously there's not enough room here to drive a vehicle through but from the other side of the layout you can't really tell that it just gives a hint and i did the same thing here where there's just a little bit of a dish that kind of makes it look like it might go over a hill into another area. So uh, I'm gonna put some flags in, Take they're not glued in, the trees aren't glued in. Put some flags in, some, some toothpicks, uh, kind of see what's going on uh, so I can do more of the groundwork there. But I, I gotta let this dry up first. This is taking forever to dry because there was just a little bit of a gap there uh, I want to make sure that's nice and solid before I move on. And of course, I also need to paint the tanks, which I haven't done yet. I've just primed them. Went ahead and went with a white base color for the tanks. Uh, and then just rusted them up and made them look ugly. Uh, now, the valve, that's actually a piece of sprue that I cut off of uh, what it was originally attached to. And I think this is 24 gauge wire, uh, just kind of bent and rolled over the top just to kind of make it look like there, there's a way to, to get some fluid into the tank. Uh, I don't know that I'm happy with the color of the concrete. I don't really have any concrete colored paint. So that was kind of a, a mix of white and a little bit of beige and I just tried to do my best to to make it look like concrete. Uh, of course it's weathered up with uh, some streaking grime, some AK streaking grime. So anyway, that's that's that. I'm ready to, to move on 
to the actual groundwork now. Uh, got a pretty good dish here, and from the other side, it definitely looks like, you know, there's, there's a depression there. Uh, I just need to go in and, and paint all this up. I'm going to leave this alone for now because I'm still not 100% sure if I'm going to cut out, you know, this track over for the rest of the, the scene there. I just, I'm, I'm leery of doing that. I'd like to be able to work it on the workbench, but I just haven't decided yet. So stand by. Got the first layer of dirt in. Went ahead and, and kind of ballasted, if you will. Uh, used more just straight dust dirt more so than, than ballast because I wanted to make it look uh, fairly used. So everything's still pretty wet at the moment. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and let it dry up and uh, put some trees in and some shrubberies. All right, well, here's what I've done. I've made a nice oil saturated spot here with some AK streaking grime. Uh, I've got various different vegetations put in here just like I did over here in the other area. Uh, pretty satisfied with it. I've got another kind of set of barrels and tanks and stuff kind of hit off over here behind the trees that, you know, hopefully will kind of pique a person's interest as they look at the scene and some more wood. Uh, I think what's going to happen next, I think I have decided that I'm not going to cut the track and separate and remove uh, the rest of the foam that all of the other stuff sits on. I think it'll take too much time. Uh, I got a lot going on in my life right now and I really wanna get this finished. So I'm gonna kind of push through and try and get this where I want it to be and maybe do it a little quicker than I originally planned. Actually, I plan to have this done over a year ago, so I don't know anything about quick. Uh, so I think the next thing I'm gonna do is, is go in here and do the dirt work in here, kind of figure out uh, where I wanna stop it in relationship to uh, bucket coal there. Uh, Cause I gotta figure out where exactly the in scale track coming in and out of there is gonna be and how you know, is there going to be a road that comes from here to the coal dealership? That's kind of what I have in mind. I just don't know how I'm going to pull it off. But uh, I'm, I'm going to for sure get started on this dirt work in here. Now, this is the part of the video where I'm going to uh, challenge your, your patience and, and see how actually dedicated you are to, to watching the video. Uh, I'm, I'm going to think through this process here kind of out loud. Uh, I'm going to have to bring up this, I'm, I'm calling it a road, uh, up to where there's some believability that a truck could cross over here without getting high centered and, and make it look a little bit believable and blend it down in here to a lower gradient. If I haven't mentioned it, the single biggest mistake I made in this railroad, uh, this this module, the, the layout that I'm doing right now, is I used roadbed. I, I should never have put the roadbed on the styrofoam. Uh, if I were to start again tomorrow, what I would do instead is probably uh, get my Dremel and Dremel out the area in the foam and then countersink the roadbed into it so that my tracks would be flat on top of the roadbed and I would still be ground level with the tracks. Uh, Cause not being ground level with all of the buildings and everything has caused me more problems than I know what to do with. So uh, that, that little bit of the rant is over with. So, uh, I'm going to use 
joint compound, I think is gonna be the first thing I try. I've, I've never done anything like this before where I'm actually gonna try and create a crossing uh, over the tracks. Uh, so that ought to be fun. Hopefully I won't destroy anything. But uh, that's what I'm gonna do is, is get some joint compound and hopefully leave it uh, where I can, right when it gets to where you can kind of work it a little bit and, and, and make that look like a decent crossing. After further consideration and looking at the consistency of the joint compound, it became apparent that that wasn't gonna work very well. So I, I did go with sculpt mold I put just a little bit of latex paint in it. Uh, I don't know if that was a good idea or a bad idea, but it's got just a little bit of the, the ground color that, that I've been using. Not, not this dark color, but more of a sand yellow. Uh, so I'm gonna have to let this dry, because uh, if I try and do anything on the tracks while this is still wet, I'll uh, inevitably jack it up. So, while this is drying, I'm gonna do just a, a little more research on maybe what the best solution is to create a, a dirt crossing. Uh, the joint compound might not be the best idea. M maybe plaster would be better. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm sure some of you are probably screaming at the screen going, no, don't do that, do this instead. Well, I'm gonna do some research. Uh, so I'm through for the night. Uh, stand by. As you can see, I decided to go with a wood crossing instead of going with uh, either plaster or joint compound. Uh, now it's just gonna be a matter of kind of filling in this area here and blending it everything together. Uh, I also added some cork, which brings the blue building up to where it should be for proper height at the dock area there. Uh, just not sure how, how all this area here is gonna work because if there's a road that goes back there, I've got nowhere to go with it. Uh, I can't really make it disappear behind this building, I don't think. I don't think I can create that illusion because the building's so close to the backdrop unlike, uh, you know, the farmer's co-op where you've got room back behind and and even the other buildings, there's actually room back behind them to do something with to, to kind of create that illusion. So this is maybe one of those things where uh, I can't make it look like a road. And the only problem with that is, is the interface of this road, how it hits here, doesn't look very good because yeah, it's such an acute angle. And I did consider, you know, maybe putting this on a bias in line with this and then having this go that way. Maybe that's what I should have done, but I was worried about how far this track came out and that would have looked kind of strange, but truth be known, that probably would have looked less strange than this is. So there you go. I'm gonna live with it though. Uh, stand by. All right, we'll take a look at some in progress here. Uh, what I've done is I've gone in with Arizona Rock and Minerals in scale ballast. Uh, this particular color is Cumbers and Toltec. And so, the plan is right now everything's dry and I've just kind of shaped it. I did, I did put a base coat of my uh, light sand color there where the road's gonna be. But I'm gonna wet all this down with the wet water, the alcohol, 
And then once it's nice and wet, I'm going to dust over with Cumbers and Toltec Earth, which is super fine uh, sand. So once that's all nice and wet, that's what, what the plan is, you know, is that if I get that nice and wet, I'll dust that on top and that should also, you know, start to get wet, you know, change colors from that color to a darker color. Uh, and then once everything's kind of nice and saturated the way it needs to be, then I'll come in and hit it with my 50-50 you know, uh, white glue and, and water. So, stand by. So, to this side of the road, I went in with New England Brownstone Super Dirt. And truth be known, I probably should have sifted this uh, to some degree, because it's pretty rough. Uh, lots of rocks in there. I, I may end up having to kind of scrape some of that stuff out. I'm not sure how that's all going to turn out. But I went in with that and also the same stuff here. Uh, and of course I did, just like I said in the last segment, I've got uh, the Arizona Rock and Minerals super fine Cumbers and Toltec sand on top of that. Uh, so the next step, and, and, le, and let me, <laughs> I, I forgot to mention that the super dirt, it's, it's the wrong color. So when you put the super dirt on next to the Cumbers and Toltec, it ends up being a lighter gray in comparison in color. So my way to make up for that is while this is sopping wet, I go in with the the light sand, the Cumbers and Toltec sand on top of everything while it's wet, hoping that that blend will make something that's gonna look a, a lot more like what I've already got everywhere else, you know, so it doesn't stand out as a completely different color for no reason whatsoever. So, there we go. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and probably continue back over here. I think probably the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and ballast all of this and kind of blend in where the crossing is. Of course, I'm not gonna use ballast. I'm gonna use the, the pure Cumbers and Toltec dirt because I think I get a, a better look personally than, uh, you know, if I can, you know, if you look at the ballast over here, it's pretty rough which I'll, I'll probably, can, I'll have to continue that on the main line, uh, but I think everywhere else, pardon the movements, I think I'm gonna use just the sand because I think, I think it looks like a siding should look, I suppose, I don't know, or at least a, a narrow gauge siding. All right, uh, I'll come back and show you more when I've done more. As far as the dirt goes from where the corrals are gonna set, this way, I've got the base dirt work complete. I probably ended up making a little more work for myself than I needed to. Uh, you can see this area here is where the end scale track work is supposed to come out uh, for the bucket trolleys. And I'm gonna need an area in here probably where a, a vehicle could come in. You know, I, I have a lot of ignorance about what and how this dealership worked. You know, you've got a track side, then you've got a track side here, and then you've got these holes here for a small end scale thing. So, you know, I'm just kind of winging it because I did try and find uh, some pictures of something like this on the internet before I ever put it together and I just kind of came up empty-handed. The only thing I was able to actually find was some pictures of some similar colored buckets. Uh, but anyway, I, I digress. But uh, I left a spot there for that. I forgot to do that on the other side. So it looks like once again, 
I'm gonna have to make something that looks like a road disappearing back behind here with some trees in this area. And then also I plan on having trees on the back side of bucket coal. Uh, but the next thing I need to do while all this, while all of this dries up is, uh, is go ahead and, and quit procrastinating and get the in scale track here where I wanted them this. So that's gonna help me decide what I really need to do next. Progress, progress, and more progress. So you can see I've I've got the the in scale track for the for the trolleys there. Now don't look real close at the tie spacing. The fellers were drunk. Uh, they had quite the batty fang at the cafe the night before they put this together and you know the fellers just they're, they're not exactly what you'd call cat lappers and so they had a little trouble getting things you know spaced out the way they should be but it, it's all gonna work so uh, <laughs> there it is nothing's glued in yet so I think the next thing I'm gonna have to do is kind of figure out how to weather this up because it's it's coal, so there's gonna have to be some coal dust and I think I've got some coal somewhere over in that mess. So uh, stand by and I will show you more when I've got more accomplished. As you can see, I got started on some static grass. Uh, and I also, it's probably hard to tell, but I did do some dry brushing on the tops of the rocks uh, that, that showed up in my ground cover. I wanna point out a few mistakes that I made because this is all a learning process. Uh, the first mistake, if, you know, if, you're gonna, if there's gonna be long periods of time between doing some of your your scenery and then later scenery, do a good job of marking what you used and knowing uh, what it is you used because I, I ended up with a much brighter green in here than what I used elsewhere. Uh, I really thought I had the right color, but needless to say, my German is not very good and I apparently misread the package. Uh, that was the first mistake. Now the next mistake is I used too dilute amount of glue in this area. Uh, when I originally went in with this, uh, it was much more sparse than this. I mean like a lot more sparse, but the glue uh, was just too thin and then spread out into areas. And this was probably also a little damp. And so my static grass ended up sticking in a lot of places that I had no idea it was actually gonna be at. So that's, that's, the, that's the second mistake. Uh, and I feel like there was a third mistake as well, but I can't remember. Uh, but bottom line, uh, I don't have the right color of green in there, but it's, you know, it's gonna be okay. Uh, so I'm letting this dry up real good because I am gonna go in with, with more layers to kind of try and match because I do have some dead longer grass that I think once I put in there, it won't be too terribly noticeable. But I think I'm gonna go in and figure out what I'm gonna do with my trees back behind here while, while all this is drying. I guess I'm gonna call the scenery finished and for the most part, uh, everything to the corrals is complete. I think turned out pretty good. Let's kinda of let you take a look. I'll point out uh, one problem and that's that my crossing, uh, 
worked great with a rail car and it works good with uh, the Blackstone locomotives, but the precision scale does not like this. Uh, it's binding somewhere, so I'm gonna have to go in and do some more sanding and cutting and, and making sure that uh, everything's the way it should be. Uh, I believe the precision scale locomotives have finer tolerances uh, all the way around than the Blackstones do, at least that's my guess. Take a look at the back side here. Okay, I'm just gonna drone around a little bit so you can kind of see. A little more of what's going on. Uh, the barrels and what not there on the dock, uh, again, they're not weathered. Uh, you'll note there in the shade are some sunflowers. <laughs> don't, don't ask me why. I thought about that just a, the second I saw that once the trees were there and thought, well, that doesn't make any sense. So eventually I may go in and pull those out. There it is. I'm really happy with the way everything has turned out. Uh, luck, I've got maybe one more day's worth of work on uh, the corrals. And of course, there'll be all kinds of detail work still. Uh, painting and a few other things to add here and there. But for the most part, uh, the majority of the scenery work is, is completed. Well, once again, thanks for watching Otter Creek in Rio Grande. Uh, stay tuned, there'll be more, more to come. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.